Okay, James LaFon with your toxic masculinity shirt. That's right, toxic masculinity's days are over. Uh, <laughs> uh, pretty much uh, a, big, a big focus I like to focus on uh, with this site is the idea of horror as metaphor. Okay. Um, but I like to make these videos relatively not super long, but make a few of them maybe. But... Uh, we'll go. We'll go with it. We'll see what happens. Uh, what is your? What are your? Fa I'm not, and I'm not going to limit it to movies because obviously it, there's other facets. But what horror stuff, for lack of a better term, do you like? Like what films do you do you like? What literature? What uh, you know? Whatever. Uh, some kind of, I guess, uh, fictional narrative. Or maybe even something that's not fictional. Uh, it could be a historical thing. What are your favorite horror... What is your favorite... Like, what is your top five list? It doesn't have to be five, but... Of horror... Whatever. I really like... Um, the Ghost of Sleepy Hollow. And I think... Uh, part of what comes out on that is the idea of the, the American forest as um, a place of horror, or really a place where people's ambitions are smashed. Uh, one, uh, uh, the only movie I've seen this year, uh, the Werner Hotzog movie, Wrath of God, Akira, I think. Yeah. Um, that's basically about, it's a fictional treatment of an actual expedition down the Amazon where uh, the, um, the inhospi inhospitable nature of the jungle, it's incompatible with the equipment of the invaders, dooms them to failure. And um, the jungle, each other, they all end up uh, dying uh, largely by their own hands. I, th there were a lot of similarities to that and uh, the thing. Oh, the Kurt Russell was that? Oh, the so, John so Carpenter? okay. I just want to make it clear. So you, t the uh, John Carpenter, the nineteen eighty one or nineteen, yeah, nineteen eighty one. Uh, I think it was eighty one. The Thing movie, the one where they're in Antarctica and there's all guys. You like that? Yes, and it's the, I think that um, having a um, having uh, a natural background that's lethal in itself, an Arctic situation, or for early Europeans that came to this country, just a forest. Yeah. The, uh, some of the best horror stories are real are really uh, narratives of uh, people's experiences dealing with the new wilderness when they came from. An area that had been cultivated for uh, for many hundreds of years. So uh, I like uh, the stories that are called sword and sorcery uh, because they combine horror elements. They combine cosmic horror with uh, with heroics, with adventure. I I've never been into passive horror. I like the movie called Midnight Meat Train. Oh, you saw that with uh, I, I, Vinnie Jones. It's a Clive Barker, uh, based on Clive Barker, a uh, short story from the early, from the 80s. Uh, yeah, okay. right, so I like urban horror, and uh, I like uh, horror stories that are set in a natural environment that itself is lethal. Okay, so, right, so we'll go through it real quick for, you know, the artists. Right, we got uh, Sleepy Hollow. Right. We got uh, The Thing, we have uh, Werner Herzog's I Guerre You, The Wrath of God, which you saw recently. Uh, we have Midnight Me Train, okay. Uh, and obviously you're talking about Conan, right? Robert E. Howard uh, stuff. I mean, I remember the Conan film and the ripoffs of the Conan films, like The Sword and the Sorcerer or Beastmaster or these other films that you probably didn't see or maybe you did, I don't know. Uh, well, I actually I, did see those. I was young you, when they came in. Yeah, there was a lot of horror elements in those films, in The Sword and the Sorcerer and Beastmaster. 
and uh, there, there were a horror. There were scenes in there that that actually scared the hell out of me. Uh, so and that's obviously if you know Robbie Howard stuff. And Solomon Kane was probably Solomon Kane and Bran McMore had a stronger horror element than the, even the Conan stories. And Howard wrote uh, various horror standalone horror stories. Oh yeah, um, Black Hound of Death. He even. Uh, I think he even wrote one about an opera singer who recorded an album to blast the intelligence of a critic or something. Oh, wow. And That's sent the LP to him. That's interesting. Okay. Oh. Uh, he did uh, Black Canaan. Uh, oh, yo, gee, yeah. Was, uh, was a racial heart oh, the, story. Oh, okay. come on. Uh, the... Uh, folklore and horror he uh he did some of that and uh my recent horror stories that i've been writing uh, are folklore based and i i really uh i've been impressed by the fact that very very few american horror stories have been based on uh the horrific themes mm. uh, from our folklore era, and particularly from uh, um, uh, from the horrific elements in, in Native American folklore, like the Stonish Giants, uh, uh, the Skinwalker, uh, uh, Wendigo, and uh, related to that would be the Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Yeah. That's the one thing that's really kind of yeah. uh, stuck with uh, Actually, yeah. in the American mythology, but it, not, not horrifically. Uh, people haven't really dealt with that. Um, th th it's more seen as a cryptozoological curiosity. Yeah, yeah. I remember Black Elgin on Blackwood had a, a story called the Wendigo, but of course he was a British writer, uh, so I, and I haven't read that yet. I know. Uh, all right, uh, so we've gone over some stuff you like. I'll just say that the, the most horrific thing you ever wrote is the Jericho Bone. Oh, thank you. The Jericho Bone was nasty. And I remember when you were writing it, or when you had done it, you're like, yeah, I'm not a, you weren't really a huge horror, like, you weren't like me, like a horror movie fan and, and the comics and, and all this stuff. But, uh, man, there were scenes in that where I was like, I was like, oh, Jesus. Uh, and I didn't have to make those things up because uh, the Jericho Bone was based on uh, Abdal Latif his journal, he was a physician working in Cairo during the famine of 1201 when essentially the population of Cairo went nuts uh, into uh, under a famine, the Nile failed to flood and they, people went into a cannibalistic frenzy mm. uh, the poor were digging up bodies and eating them the rich were sending away for Sub-Saharan African chefs who knew how to cook people oh in the my most God. delectable uh, way. Doctors were being lured by the rich uh, to a house to care for somebody uh, as a pretense, so that the rich could then feast on the doctors. I mean, it was just a, it was a total horror show, and uh, uh, I. I I, I kind of tried to soften it a little bit by dressing it up in some supernatural elements. I used an alien interloper. Oh, as a supernatural yeah. Supernatural right. element, but I don't think that made it, it might have made it creepier, but there was nothing that you could have done to make it any more horrific. Yeah. You know, I'm like gonna... The alley full of dogs, Ooh. where the dogs were eating everybody, so they walled all the yeah. dogs in this one alley. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> I'm going to link to that, because that, like I said, that is a very impressive horror book from someone who was like ah, I'm not really into horror but at, over time uh, there's a few horror films I've watched with you what did you think of The Witch? Do you remember The Witch? Oh, I, I really like that because it mixes uh, uh, supernatural uh, horror in, in the form of witchcraft with two other types of horror the social Oh, yeah. horror of alienation it starts out with a family being put out of a gated plantation and they're going off on their own because they're apostates after a sense they're outcasts right anybody that's 
gone through uh, the last couple of years and has had to experience possibly losing their job because they didn't get a certain injection oh. or, or wear a certain thing on their face <laughs> uh, might understand this. Yeah. And it mixes it with the quintessential American horror element of the forest. And I'm talking, it, it wasn't just a horrific element for the Europeans that were coming from a heavily landscaped yeah. environment. To a virgin forest, it was also horrific for the natives. Like the plague. Uh, you, uh, they there are two two legends: the Stonish Giants and the Wendigo. These are pallid humanoid creatures. Oh God! Uh, that are cannibals that are kind of human-like, but have some other characteristics. They tend to be paler and hairier oh. than the people that they feed upon. And it reminds me of characters like Lewis Wetzel, who spent an entire generation hunting Native Americans in a vengeance hunt. Uh -huh. And uh, Liver Eating Johnson, his name was William Garrison, and became known as, as he changed his name to uh, Johnston. Uh, he had a feud with the, uh, the Blackfeet and the Sioux. The Blackfeet ended up leaving him alone, and they ended up calling him Bad Medicine. There's a story that he pretended to get boxed into a canyon, and then left a bunch of strychnine biscuits for the Blackfeet warriors that were hunting him. Ooh. And they didn't like him because he was selling liquor across the border in Canada. They left him alone, uh, so they had a Wendigo fear of him. He was Bad Medicine. The Sioux kept trying to kill him, and he would taunt them, he would set traps for them, and he would even cook their skulls and take the flesh off of them and write graffiti on the, sh on the skulls, like, oops, I lost my scalp or something like that. Oh, geez, really? Right. And, and, I mean, he was literally like, uh, for those two tribes, he was regarded as a monster. Uh, the other tribes, apparently, he got along with them well when he yeah. married into one of them. <laughs> and he was a guide for the, uh, you know, for the U.S. Army. So he's a character that is, he was, he was regarded in horrific terms by both some Native Americans and uh, some of the Christians that moved out there who regarded him as a whack job. So that fringe character, that serial killer kind of guy, the, the is a big part of American yeah. horror. And I think, uh, I think that partially meshes with the horror of <clears throat> not just the rural setting, but the wooded setting. And if you look at um, uh, the way people that might live in the woods have been demonized by urban people who make horror movies of a low grade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Then, uh, then you can see that strand come together there in a, a way that's become really kind of unfortunately cliched. But when uh, there is an inner horizon when you're out in the forest that you haven't been in where after about a dozen trees down when you're in the middle of a forest it becomes kind of like the same it, it really is a horizon oh, yeah. level changes and slopes and then after these trees stagger so many times there comes a point where you don't differentiate individual trees and uh i've had some very creepy senses when i've hiked alone in forests that i was new to oh. where i knew that there were for instance, in the Cascades, where there, there was a Tom Cougar. Yeah, the mountain uh, lions. That, that was his range, and I was out there. Uh, so, uh, I, I guess I can imagine what it was like for early Europeans coming to a forest that was, uh, yeah. that was really ominous. Yeah. There was an indescribable feeling of dread and atmosphere which is what we always in the end that the superior horror has that as lovecraft has noted all right this is good